6 for the gospel. Thank you. In 166. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of Christ according to Matthew, chapter 22, from verse 1 to 14. Glory to you, See Matthew's gospel, chapter 22, verse 1 to 14. Jesus spoke to them again in parable, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatting cattle have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field another to his business. The rest seized the servants, ill-treated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. 
Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the streets, corners, and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in here without a wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him, hand and foot, and throw him outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the gospel of the Lord. By standing, we shall now sing the ancient and modern 257, hymn 257. Prepare ourselves for the ceremony. Please sit. There is a car with the window open. The number is GW 242514. Blue Mercedes BMW, sorry, blue BMW. Please attend to your car. Registration number 242514. Thank you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, today is the climax for the men's week celebration. And we have as our guest preacher, a renowned Anglican priest, 
He has worked in the Diocese of Kofodra and now in the Diocese of Accra. He has been a priest for over 30 years. And presently, he's a parish priest of St. Ambrose Dom. And so I present to you the Reverend Canon Samuel Ado. My dear brother, I thank you so much for the privilege you've given me for the first time in my ministry to stand in this pulpit to preach the word of God to God's people. And I also want to thank the Men's Fellowship for inviting me to have a retreat with them yesterday, and they've asked me again to preach at this service, both seven and 10. It's a big privilege to me, and I want to thank you so much. And I pray that God is going to use me for you to be courageous delete fear and evangelize to the lost ones. Let us pray. O oh, merciful God, the creator of all things, the master of all who has given us the opportunity to come together this morning to render our services to him. It's time to receive your word. Come thou Holy Spirit and fill the hearts of each and every one of us so that as we listen to the message through your servant, your servant and handmaids will take it in good faith, not on their hearts, but in their hearts, and meditate over it day and night. Come, thou Holy Spirit, and be with us now and forevermore. Amen. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good people of God, this morning God has granted me the strength to come and stand before able men and women like you and to share the word of God. It is very prudent, it is very necessary for you and I to acquire the word and meditate over it day and night. There are three things we are going to talk about. Fear, courage, and how to go out to evangelize to those who are lost. We have a lot of people on the road. We have the people sitting somewhere. They don't even know God. But as you and I have understood the word, we have to go out. But we cannot go out with fear. We cannot go out when we don't have the courage to do that. So, beloved in Christ, fear. In evangelism, it's normal. Some of the greatest evangelists, when presenting the gospel, even though they have been doing it for decades, just because they know what to say and may even be gifted by God to say it, sharing the gospel, it's not automatic to them. They too must respond 
to the voice of the Spirit to encourage themselves, delete fear, and gather courage to move to wherever the Spirit will lead them. They too must respond to fear in a godly way in order to overcome intended opposition. Open their mouth to witness God. When there is fear, it is very hard to go out because you don't know what you are going to meet. But one thing that will take you out is prayer. So all these things that I have mentioned, the three things, prayer is the key that we must always go on our knees and pray and ask God for its direction. Beloved in the Lord, we are grounded in God's promise. Fear can be something that drives us to dependency on him. So if fear is driving you away from God's work, the person you've got to contact is the almighty God, the creator, the redeemer, the director. And this person will make you strong. It can be a tone that causes us to recognize that his grace is sufficient and the power is perfect in weakness. Now, beloved, we may believe those and other relevant verses, but fear might still be making us to run away from evangelism. But today, I want all of us to encourage ourselves. When we encourage ourselves, we can go far and we can evangelize and win the hearts of those who are weak in spirit by our attitude, by our demeanor, by the way we speak with people. You cannot go and stand in front of somebody you want to win to Christ with pride. You cannot do that. Be at the level of that person. Let him feel that you share his sentiments. But some of us we look at ourselves from an angle and we look at where we are going and those we are going to speak with. Please, the humility in Jesus Christ must be emulated in all of us. We must emulate the humility so that when we are going to people who don't look at ourselves, what we are, what we have, what we can do, and the like. But take yourself down to the glass root and know that we are preaching Christ, the humble servant, to those who have not seen him, those who have not heard about him, those who don't know him, for them to know Christ. Overcome fear with evangelism. Begins with belonging to God. If we can call God our God. Then we have access to what we need. If we can call God our God. Then God will direct us in all that we need. And he will direct us to spread his gospel. Boldness is available. When you are not courageous, when you are not bold, I tell you, you cannot make any achievement, even in your own life. Please, whatever you want to do, communion with the Lord. And ask God to give you that boldness, that courage for you to carry 
whatever you want to do. Now, there are five C's I would like to talk to you about. The first one is confidence. When you don't have confidence, look, there is nothing you can achieve. But if you have confidence, and you made your mind, and you delete that fear, and you'll be courageous, I tell you, the boldness of which you are working with will take you far. So my dear brothers, confidence is our message. Our boldness finds in, in trust in God and his message. So when we have confidence, my brothers, we can achieve a lot. If a lost person does not hear the right message, the lost person does not hear the right message, somebody else will come to him. And if the person comes, he will receive the word. But if you have courage and you approach that person and you speak the right words with him or her, I tell you, he or she will follow you forever and ever. If we are confident, if we are courageous in the message that we've been carrying along day and night and we read it and we see ourselves in it, and we have a transformation in our lives. Oh my God. There is nowhere you cannot step. You have the confidence. You have the courage. And you, you, you speak God's words. Let us look at Joshua. After the death of Moses. God gave him the courage. He said be courageous. And the other thing he added to it. Study the Bible. Have we been studying the Bible? Hello? Hello? Where are our Bibles? Do we bring our Bibles here? My goodness. We must acquainted acquainted to this book and study it day and night. Your, your life will be transformed and God will use you to bring others to his church. So the number two is conviction. That we are godly messengers. Remember, brothers and sisters, God has entrusted us with his message. This is our tool. This is our sword. And we can carry this book everywhere. Don't put it under your pillow. Read it day and night. And let the word encourage you. So if God has entrusted something good, we've left it. And we are following the world. But what shall I profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Let's come to Christ and let's study God's words. He has given us the responsibility to share it with the lost and the dying. Let us go to the hospitals and proclaim the word of God to the sick. That will give them the healing power. Say amen. You see, God's words are very strong and important that you and I must always acquire and use it. So the responsibility that God has assigned to the men's fellowship to make sure to bring people to the fold, that God has given to us, the believers, to bring the people to the fold, we must respond to that. If we don't respond, then we've turned bad ears to God that we don't want to listen to his word. Our aim in all is this, should please God, not man. 
I said we must please God with our good works, not man. If you are hearing the word, if you and I win one soul, count how many people are in this room, and we bring one soul, would they get a place to sit? They would not. That is what God is expecting from you and I. We must hide behind our pride. Hide behind your pride. Because pride always is a destructive word. You see, when you are pride, you see people under you. But when the spirit of humility is in you, any person you see, notwithstanding who you are, what you are, what you have, and you see the person as yourself, the person will cherish you and follow you to everywhere that you will go. People see people, because of their humility, he will ask the person, please, which church are you attending? Oh, I'm an Anglican. I'm a Presbyterian. I'm a Roman Catholic. Please, can I join you to service? Isn't it an achievement? Isn't it an achievement? It is. Can we do it? As we are talking about courage, pride, uh, uh, pride and fear, can we do it? One, one must or we should fear man little. We should give respect to each other. That is what the spirit is acquiring from you and I. We should respect, notwithstanding the position or situation of the person. And the third C is concern. Are we concerned about the church? Are we concerned about the clergy? Are we concerned about those who are in need? Are we concerned? We are only concerned about ourselves, what we can achieve. But remember, I say remember, when you are concerned about people, God will bless you abundantly, and God will give you what you don't even expect to get. So let us develop concern in the church, concern in the diocese, concern wherever we are, if there are workers under us, we must be concerned about them. If we are not concerned, then we don't want development. But if you are concerned about those working under you, about those working for you, and your problem is your problem, God will bless you. We have to make it a regular part of our prayer life. We have to pray or oh, pray. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key that opens all doors. Prayer is the key that heals the sick. Prayer is the sick that raises the dead. Prayer is the key that will make you prosperous and that will give you more encouragement to do God's work. Seeing the people he felt compassion. When Jesus saw Peter and his friends in the boat, he felt for them. My dear Christian friends, we must feel for our, ourselves, we must feel for the church, we must feel for others. Because God is the one who is holding, who is holding us. We must feel for the lost sheep. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, Jesus felt for them. We must look for them. The fourth C is consistency. One thing that we've been doing, we start something beautifully. But because we we'll always lose sight, and then the consistency is no more there. And then we start playing tricks. Let us stop playing the tricks. 
and be consistent in our worship and be consistent in our Bible studies and be consistent in going out to look for the lost sheep and be consistent in our, in, in, in our family. When that consistency is there, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, we can do a lot. Paul appeals to the behavior he exhibited while around Thessalonians believers in order to verify the truthfulness of the message. Look, this Bible was written by inspiration. We sometimes read and we don't understand. But there is something that will make you understand God's message. Pray for God to impact that spirit of understanding of his words unto you. Today there is going to be a turn round in our lives if we accept this message and we acquire these topics I have mentioned. So consistency will help us achieve a lot. Consistency will build the church and everybody will know that we are not playing. We are really working for God. We too must have the same courage as Peter to go out and bring others. Truthfulness. We must be truthful to ourselves. You see, when you are not truthful to yourself, you always play a bad game. What is yes, you will say no in your interest. But say no in the interest of all. And the yes will reveal himself. My dear friends, truthfulness of our message by point gives us life, gives us encouragement, and delete fear. As for fear, make sure when you take your iPad, write fear and go to delete and delete it there. Hallelujah. I said, take your iPad, write fear, mama, write fear and delete it. This thing will not come into your life. You will always speak the truth to glorify God. Beloved in the Lord, developing the forces, confidence, conviction, concern, and consistency can help us to be very courageous, to, over, to overcome fear, and make evangelism a way of life. Amen. To make evangelism, when we delete all these things, it will give us the courage to pave through life, to evangelize for people. But I would like to add the fifth C, contact. Some of us, people fear to contact us, all because we have a certain demeanor or because we don't want people to get closer to us because of what we have acquired. When people come into our houses, they even fear to sit on your sofa because of fear. I entered a certain house. I was talking to that person and somebody came in. He greeted and he sat beside me. What the person said was, come on, stand up. Have I asked you to sit down? And I was even so ashamed because the person, it's me and I, the person. Hello. So, beloved, we must have that flair so that people 
who are in need, who are distressed, can come to us and speak with us. And Master said, Come to me, all that are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. If Jesus had been sending people away, like the blind, like the leopard, can they receive healing? Maybe that day in particular, God has sent the person to you for you to heal the soul of that person. Christian brothers, Christian friends, men's fellowship, I'm tasking you as men to stand up to your task. Christian brothers, I'm tasking you to go up there and evangelize to those who are weak, to those who are in need. Finally, as we are here to support the men's fellowship to end their celebration and to speak about evangelism, I will urge all of us to start with evangelism now. There are a lot of people around you. Speak with them. Let them see you've listened to the word of God, the message, and that there is transformation in your house. So when he or she even lean on your gate, you will not come and tell him, hey, go away. Why should you lean on my gate? No. Receive that person with this heart and send him to your home and speak with him and see if whether there will not be a change. Ask yourself. And I'm also asking myself, do we have courage in God's message? For me, I'll say a big yes. I have courage because you cannot twist the Bible. When the Spirit directs you, speak out. At least one or two will receive the word. But when we listen to the message and it hits us hard, Osofo, today it's me, Osofo, sent to the pulpit. No. Nobody has told Osofo anything. It is a spirit that is bringing the message of transformation. Do we have conviction for God's message? Can we surely say, yes, God's message is a message that we must take out? Do you have concern for others if we don't have? Today, you and I standing here have been reminded that we must have concern to everybody, notwithstanding. Do we have consistency in our lives? Do we have that? If we don't have, then go to the drawing board again. And say, Lord, I have come. I need you. Do we reach out to new and existing contacts? Do we? If somebody offends you, you delete his or her name. True or false? Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Beloved, when we follow the examples of the Apostle Paul. We want to let fear don't be part of us. I've said, go home, write it boldly, fear, and delete it. But we will let it drive us to God. 
We need something to drive us to our maker. We need something to drive us to reach others. We need a spirit that teaches all things to reveal new things to us for the growth of the church. Fear and evangelism is normal. But you can overcome it as Peter overcame fear. Brothers, sisters, God loves you. God cares for you. God is concerned about you. Continue to put your trust in him. I am trusting the Lord Jesus. Trust in only thee. Trust in your full salvation. I am over trust in oh oh I am trust trust in above all be courageous and know that I am Jesus. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to the king. Place it and let's pray. Dear people of God, let us pray that God, the Holy Spirit, will descend upon each one of us to drive away fears from our hearts, to empower us for the work of witnessing. O Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the Anglican. Let us pray for the men's fellowship as they celebrate men's week. Let us pray that God will bless each one of them with a spirit of witnessing. Let us pray that God, the Holy Spirit, will empower them for the work of witnessing so that God's most holy name will be magnified. O Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for Accra Church. This is a month of evangelism, a month of witnessing. Let us pray that the Holy Spirit will empower all of us so that we will move out to rescue the perishing and care for the dying. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let, our cry come unto thee. let us pray for all who have asked for our prayers. We are praying for the sick, for the healing power to overshadow them. For those who are in sorrow, for the Lord to console them. And above all, for the Lord to reach and console them. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto thee. We pray for Enes, William, Asari, and Lugia as they celebrate their birthday. We pray that the Lord will open the gates of heaven and pour his blessings upon each one of them. O Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come unto thee. Finally, I want you to speak to the Lord. 
the, the Spirit of the Lord is with us here. And everything you ask in the name of the Lord, he will meet you at the point of your need. So speak to the Lord about your fears, your anxieties, your challenges, your problems and predicaments. Present them to the Lord. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And the Lord will surely meet you at the point of your need. O Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in making our request before you. Have compassion on our weakness. May it please you to grant us those things because of our blindness we cannot ask. And those things because of our unworthiness we dare not ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. We are the body of Christ in one spirit. We are all baptized into one body. Let us pursue all that means for peace and build up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us all wave each other the sign of peace. First of a tree hymn is Asian in the Morning, 568, in 568. Of a tree hymn, 568. What is that? As we are coming, we are taking two offerings, one for the day and then one for the men's week celebration. It is a harvest the men are doing, and that is uh, according to the day bonds and then the offering for the day. And so let us all give generously. God loves a cheerful giver. 
God bless you as you come. Two, one for the men's mini harvest and then one for today's offering. God bless you. We shall continue with Asian Morning 569, 569.
We continue in 571. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Father Almighty. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is very made right and abandoned duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who in our only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit at one God, one Lord, not one holy person, but three persons in one substance. For that which we believe of the glory of the Father, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit without any difference or inequality. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, pour your Spirit upon these gifts, so that for us becomes a body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. The night before was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread, gave you thanks and praise, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. My Lord and my God. When Sapa was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. Give the cup to the disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant which is shared for you and for all, so that sin will be forgiven. Do this, as often as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us go up quickly in the mystery of our faith. We celebrate the memory of our redemption, O Father, in this celebration of bread and wine, recalling the death, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sanctify this bread and wine so that for us becomes the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the drink of new and ending joy in Him. Sanctify us in the rally also. And help us worship you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the general resurrection, the last day, may be found acceptable in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Brothers and sisters, let us pray the prayer our Savior Christ has taught us. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Jesus, Lamb of God, Jesus, Redeemer of the world, Jesus, bearer of our sins, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world, happy are those who are called to this supper.
Our first communion hymn is each in the morning, 190, hymn 190.
him 191 670, 67 there.
the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, may the body and blood of your Son give us a share in his life. For his Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray after communion. Today is Sunday, 15th October 2023, 19th Sunday after Trinity. Bands are published between Ernest Adu Jr. and Margaret Latte Kwe. This is the third and final announcement. David Buama and Agnes Mamiesi Amwa. This is the second announcement. Cedric Ni Note Amate and Efua Sapon Kranche Aje. This is the first announcement. If anyone knows any just cause or impediment as to why these couples should not be joined by holy matrimony, he or she must contact the ministers. Other information, Bible study. In-person Bible study continues every Sunday during the 7.30 a.m. service and from 9.45 a.m. and 10.15 a.m. Prayer meeting. Congregational prayer sessions continue this and every Friday at 6 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. at Ridge and Manet, respectively. Join Ghana Praise this and every Wednesday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. Anaviosi. Evangelism Month is under the theme, Impacting Others to Also Live the Transformed Life, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 14. The clergy will continue teaching on the topic, Soul Winning, Is ARC Winning Souls? On Wednesday, 18th October. This is virtual at 5.30 p.m. Harvest 2023. We wish to inform all schools to gear up for the 2023 Schools Harvest Thanksgiving. Please make payments at the church secretariat in respect of your school. The school league has been published in the weekly bulletin. Souvenirs for 2023 Harvest and Thanksgiving are available for sale at the bookstore. Please pass by and buy some. The Women's Fellowship resumes their food sales next Sunday, 22nd October, 2023. Something new and attractive awaits you after service next Sunday. Rich Church School, Kindergarten 2 and Class 1 Admission, 2024-2025 Academic Year. Members of Rich Church with biological children or grandchildren born in the year 2019 for KG2 and 2018 for class one, who won them enrolled in the school, are to see the headmistress from Monday 6th to Wednesday 8th November 2023 within the hours of 9.30 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. for application forms. You'll be required to pay 200 Ghana cities for the forms and interview. Present the original birth certificate of your child for inspection and provide evidence of your church membership card indicating that you are a paid up member of the church. Kindly know that proof must be shown for legally adopted children. If you are 30 to 40 and you haven't joined monthly young adults meeting yet, this invitation is particularly for you. Come to the ARC Hall Basement Room B23 on Friday, 20th October at 6 p.m. for fellowship and Bible study. Snacks and children are available. So snacks and child care. 
<laughs> Snacks and childcare available for those who want to bring their children to be taken care of. And you might make a new friend. See you there. Sunday, 22nd October is Children's Day, and this will take place at the 10.30 a.m. service. Details are on the church's WhatsApp platform. The management and staff of Vine Christian Schools are worshiping with us today. They are celebrating the 18th and 4th anniversaries, respectively, of the Vine Primary and High Schools. Funeral announcement. The death is reported of Mr. Peter Kwesisam Saki, a member of this church. Funeral arrangements will be announced later. He was the husband of Mrs. Grace Saki, also a member of this church. Thank you. We now invite members who are celebrating various anniversaries to come for their blessings. And we do so by singing supplementary 15, the first stanza only, supplementary 15, first stanza. Birthdays, blessings, anniversary, you are welcome. Gracious and everlasting Father, we thank you for the life of your servant and your handmaid. As they celebrate their birthday, we pray that you will fill their heart with joy and gladness. We pray that you will meet each one of them at the point of their need and help each one of them to daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until they are called to everlasting kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. invite men, members of the men's fellowship to come for the church's blessing. Most high God, 
without you, nothing is possible. But with you, all things are possible. Your servant started, and today they are before you, so that you come from above and bless them. Father, through this celebration, let them go out with courageousness and evangelize to those who are sick, to those who have not seen you, that they will draw them to you. I pray as they go, go with them. And whenever they meet, be in your presence and direct them in all their doings and actions. Heal those who are sick among them. Stretch forth your hands upon them that they will take courage to do your work. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we are almost through. The men's fellowship has a message for you. Within the next few minutes, they will get the message and then we are done. Christ in you. Christ in you. Christ in you. The men's fellowship of Manet to do and Main Ridge have decided to come together. So in the, taking the initiative that we started last year, this celebration is for the three groups coming together. And we intend to use this platform to build a soldier, uh, uh, an army of men to evangelize for the Lord. We invite in all men in the church especially the young men, to join us to strengthen our numbers so that we can continue doing the work of the Lord with the strength and blessings. Regrettably, we lost five members of the men's fellowship last year. The name of Nasco, Victor Kwesi Saki, and they were all from the main red church. The Accra Rich Church Men's Fellowship, the one based here, meets on the second Monday of the month for Bible study and the last Monday of the month for a general meeting. The group at Manet meets on a selected Sunday once a month and the group at Tudu meet also on a selected Sunday once a month after the second services. The intention is that next year, or after this, uh, of activities together so that the bonding between the fellowships gets stronger. We started our annual week celebration on Monday the 9th. We've had a film show. We've had a talk by Reverend Engineer Sechiapia. Yesterday, we had a wonderful retreat from uh, Reverend Canon Samuel Addo, who is our guest preacher today. And we are rounding off the celebration with our Thanksgiving services at 7.30 and the 10.30. We, the Men's Fellowship of 
Accra Richard, we wish to extend our gratitude to congregants for the continued We entreat the entire congregation to grow from strength to strength and use this strength to win souls for Christ. We use this as a rallying call once again for all men in the church to join the men's fellowship. And we ask for God's blessings on Accra Ridge Church Men's Fellowship, on the congregations of Accra Ridge Church, and on our nation, Ghana. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless all of you this day in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and remain with all of you this moment and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Our recession now hymn is Eastern Morning 281. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us.
know, I know. I mean, you know, it is top notch. Hey.